Welcome to the Chris and Sam podcast. Pull up a bar stool and join us for a random conversation, guaranteed to make you think or your money back. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chris and Sam podcast. Why, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. That's a very uh, impressive intro there from you, Chris. Well, that sounded a bit posh, what you were saying. I'm like, oh, ooh, I've got to up my game here a bit. Oh, you know? It's not posh, but this is episode number 27 of the Chris and Sam podcast, which will probably be known for the Pumpkin Carnival episode. The Pumpkin Carnival episode, indeed. We mentioned it last episode that we were going to talk about it, so we better do that or we might upset some of our fans. <laughs> Both of them. Both of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. The Pumpkin Carnival. I, I, I'm going to quickly jump in here and, and say a bit about my experience of the Pumpkin Carnival. Well, we'll, we'll lead up to it. So basically, <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll do a yeah, bit no, of an okay, intro okay. because if you're think, listening to this, you're like, what the hell are they on about? So I run giantpumpkins.co.nz, the only website in New Zealand for growing giant pumpkins. And I help out uh, a lot of new growers with information and pointing them in the right direction with certain things. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it, and <laughs> for some reason that's me. But that's okay. I quite like it. And uh, yeah, anyway. So I grow giant pumpkins and miniatures and all sorts. And I go to a lot of pumpkin events. And I want to say I've probably been, I'm probably the person that's been to the most pumpkin events this year in New Zealand because no one else will want to do this. But that's what I do. And I half organized the Great Pumpkin Carnival here at Hamilton, which is one of the biggest pumpkin-only events in the country, and we but, think it's one of the best. And when he says half organises, he doesn't mean that it's only a half-organised half, half organized event. He means he does half of the organising. Yes, I do I half think. the organising, and there's a woman called Jenny who, uh, this is our sixth year doing it, and she, one day she just woke up and had a vision that um, she wanted to run a pumpkin event, even though she never grows them. So, oh, really? I didn't know that. I thought you just sort of dragged her in somehow. No, the way around. Oh, really? So, when uh, she, I went to the very, very first one and she was there running around and it was all sorts of crazy because a lot of people turned up to the very first one. And then we made contact via email and stuff and she said, Oh, we should meet up and have a talk. And we met at a cafe and I didn't know what she looked like and she didn't know what I looked like. So, I'm in this cafe sort of sitting there with a drink and this, oh, uh, Old, elderly, well, she's in her 60s, I think. She was, went up to some random, really old dude in this cafe and said, Hey, are you Sam from Giant Pumpkins NZ? And this guy gave her the weirdest look. I always remember that. He's like, No, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I was like, Oh, that's me. And she was like, Oh my God, I didn't realize you were so young. And I was like, Yeah. So from there, it's grown. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. No, and, and it is quite a big deal now. I, I mean, six years. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. seems to be. So my experience is that um, I, I've been to two others. I think I've been to two others. Yeah, I think you've been twice. Yeah, Once yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, But this time I, should I say, made the mistake no. of saying I would help out. So I'm like, oh, I'll give you a hand. I'll give you a hand. No worries. So Sam says, yep, okay, be there at 7.30. Yes. A.M.? A.M. Okay. So, no, that was cool. And um, get, I, I'm, I'm a morning person anyway, so that was all good. Got down there, um, started putting up tents, and it poured down, didn't it? It was pretty intense. It's the only year it's ever rained for us. Yeah, and it was like I got soaked through, soaked through. Yeah. Um, and it was funny, too, because we just put up that big marquee tent, and then after the rain stopped, it was like, oh, we, we, might, we might have found the only hollow in this entire yeah, field. Yeah, it was like full we of water. To, <laughs> we had to move the marquee because it was like a swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah, not quite as good as Martin's, but there you go. Uh, That's but yeah, right. so anyway, it was a long day. It was a long day, and it, but it went real quick. I had my first break at 12.30. Yeah. Um, and I finally caught up with the Lush Monster and his wife who turned up. Yes, um, it was great to see them there. Yeah, it was good, and... Moira was wearing the pumpkin hat. Yes, I mean that was pretty awesome. cool. Um, so yeah, so so that was good and it, a lot of fun. But the funniest thing I think for me anyway was early on I said to Sam, "What time does this finish? Am I going to be able to go to the gym?" Like yeah. I, I was planning on going to the gym at thought, four o'clock. I thought it was a weird request. And he looked at me like really oddly and went, "I don't think you were going to go to the gym later." And I'm like, "Yeah, whatever. I probably want to go to the gym. I, you know, because I just haven't done that much this week." <laughs> so I ended up doing a lot of weighing of pumpkins. Manhandling of pumpkins. 
Yeah, which, which is, is quite like a, picking we, them up and putting them on the scale and taking them off and putting them on a trolley or whatever. So the, I think the biggest pumpkin that I like picked up and carried was um, Sumeronis, actually, I think, uh, 49 kilos. Yeah. So that was the biggest one I carried by myself. But the ones that, you know, there's three or four of us on a tarp picking them up, putting them on. They're, Dragging they're a, them around. Couple of hundred kilos, you know. Yeah, it's good times. So, um, yeah, I was sweating profusely, um, and I am older. My knees have been sore for the last two days. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get the sore knee thing. So I'm uh, good. I don't know. We well, see. I lift with my knees, not my back. Yeah, so it must good. be an old person thing. Yeah, or maybe. Anyway, so yeah, no, it was good. It was a great day, um, and I I really got into the pumpkin rolling. And I don't know if you noticed because. That's just me being me. I'm a bossy bugger, eh? Yeah, I saw you yell at some kids. Out of the way! <laughs> that was great. Oh, that was um, good fun. Yeah, I, and not just the pumpkin rolling. I'm like, I'm in charge now. We're going to move this tent. You guys pick that. Or you you go there. You get, I just give orders like nobody's business. I just assume nobody else is going to do it. No, so it's I good because it. a lot of uh, the, the problem we have, it's hard to find good people to help you out. And, and I think that's probably with any event. And I said to Jenny, I said, I the people I asked to come are, um, you know, quality over quantity. Like there may only be three or four of us, but at least I know what everyone's doing, and they can all think for themselves, and they're not idiots. Because um, when you have idiots, they they can't think for themselves, and they're like, oh, oh yeah, I, I know, I know do? exactly what you mean. If you get the wrong people helping you out, they're actually more work. They take yeah, more yeah. of your energy. Yeah. You may as well say, no, next time just stay at home. Yeah, you know. And sad as that is, I mean, you know, they mean well and all the rest of it, but yeah. But yeah, I, I don't have a lot of patience. This is no. another thing of this old, being older, and I'm just like, do this, do that, do this, do that. Um, and yeah, so so I, I, I almost, I, th- I feel I, I might owe you an apology for being a bossy bugger. No, no, you're good. That's good. <laughs> Everything was good. No, no, it was, uh, it was a good day. And one of the things we had to this year, and it's the... F- I seen a photo a couple of days before they turned up uh, from a friend, and it was the first time I seen them in person. And I don't know how widespread these things are around the world or other parts of the country, but they're called bumpet balls. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they're yeah. like the best thing I've ever seen. I was it's, so gutted I didn't get a chance to, to 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 have a go at. I'm those. going to have a go next time I find them somewhere. It's oh. a round ball with a cylinder, a, a, a gap all the way down the centre is the best way I can describe it. And it's got some handholds in it, and they put the ball over the kid or the adult. And yeah, they have different size ones. For and your feet are sticking out from the bottom, and it's cover- It's above your head, so you can. And they're transparent, so you can actually see. Yeah, going. so you can run into people at speed, bounce off, roll on the ground, and be fine. But you can also roll forward and do a flip because and, your head doesn't hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. and it's just. Oh, we will post a photo. So, so you know, it is awesome. I've seen there's a classic, classic video, and this is a few years old now, I think, but um, of somebody playing soccer, yeah, indoor soccer with those things, and because I think that's the key is is that you're looking at the ball that you're playing soccer with, yeah, and then you're trying to tackle each other, but you've got this hemisphere around yeah, you, yeah. and you're just bouncing off each other, and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen so yeah um i i was really keen on getting um some people to to do this bump it thing a while ago most of them didn't know what it was and this is the first time i've seen them live but unfortunately it didn't seem to get used that much or maybe i was just so busy i didn't get to see no i doing it. the radio guy was going to challenge me at a go at it but the limit's 100 kilos and i'm just over 100 kilos so i right. could have faked it actually and gone but he was a bit over and he said oh and I don't think he would have fitted, actually. I don't think he would have fitted down the centre, to be honest. Wow, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Was... I should have had a go. So Ryan and um, so Ryan and Colin had a go, and they they started at each corner and ran at each other as fast as they could. Oh, just, really? I didn't see it, but they were telling me, yeah, he said we just slammed into each other at full speed and just bounced off each other. Amazing that it pop It'd be up. such a cool experience. Oh, I, want to do I reckon it would be great for a team building exercise for oh, a yeah, company. Totally. That's totally. what I'd do. We want to smash everyone. And I like that idea of the soccer ball because it gives you something to focus on other than just running into each other. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? I, I think um, you, know, you have a sort of uh, a basic goal at either end and you play yep. soccer with it. That would be the way and to do it. There, we had a lady there that was selling homemade, handmade ice blocks oh yeah, yeah and they were 
I, so I was like really hot, and I was like, I'll have an ice block. So we. Yeah, yeah, I've got to stop you there. It was pouring down when we were setting up. As soon as it, the thing sort of started, the yeah. sun came. Well, the the rain stopped. It was cloudy, and then the sun came out, and a bunch of us got sunburned. Yeah, it was a great day. Yeah, it, it was, was a great day. Very very warm. So I'm standing there, and there's some people standing in front of me. Because I don't have much time, actually, to do anything, like let alone eat. Like eating is just shoveling stuff in my mouth, and then I've got to go do something else. Yeah. Um, as Chris knows. And so I just want an ice block, and the the people in front of me were buying like five of them. And there's multitude of flavors, and they had to ask about everything. So does, uh, what does this one have here? Oh, this one's dairy, gluten, and everything free. It's vegan free handmade this is what's in it blah 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 okay that's cool now what about this one and i was like hurry up hurry up i just <laughs> and i may have actually said that out loud but in, in the other direction i just i think i yelled it out yeah. a bit um so they left and i she i said look what flavor do you recommend and she's like well do you like coconut i was like i could do coconut so i had a coconut and vanilla handmade gluten-free dairy-free everything free Handmade ice block, and that'll be five dollars. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to pay. For it. Anyway, I paid five dollars, and it was actually really, really good. Yeah, I have to admit it. Even though, is we, it worth the five bucks? I thought it was, but we mentioned that to Ryan in the truck, yeah, yeah. and he had <laughs> had a fit. Yeah, had a fit pretty much about that. <laughs> There's no way in the world I'd pay five dollars for an ice block ever. I don't care if you're eating your bloody. Yeah, I mean, you see, I'm desensitized because I pay five bucks for a coffee, and I don't see the difference. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. But I mean, it was hand. It actually because it was handmade, and I don't know if they're all like this, but the one I had was so solid and chewy. It took like five times longer to eat that than a normal ice block. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, it was like that. chomp, and I was. Yeah, it was good. It was interesting. Yeah, good to know. Do you remember the name? Can Wouldn't we... have a clue. <laughs> Wouldn't have a clue. Give a yell out to, no, we don't know. No. Anyway, I might shout find... out to the random yeah, I might, ice I might, cream maker. Yeah, I might find out and put it in the show notes if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and so obviously in the show notes, we're going to have your wonderful little video. I like that video. I love the intro that you did on the video, the Giant Pumpkins logo intro. Oh, that's a, let's see, um, uh, your Fiverr special. Oh, yeah. This guy oh. does those. You just yeah. give them the logo and they're all the same though. Yeah, but it looked good. It looked good. I was really impressed. Yeah, I um, know Carl was too. I know because I watched it and Carl watched it obviously at the same time. We we're on a messenger service called Telegram that we've mentioned before we're working it. And then as soon as I got off, I was going to go, that was really cool. And I really like your intro. And that's exactly what Carl said. Like he said exactly what I was about to say. I went, what Carl said. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Ditto. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like, you know, it was straight. So we've got a video of downhill pumpkin rolling. Yeah. Which, which is, is the highlight. It is. It's exactly what it sounds like. I came up Except with that. Except when you hit a vegetable with a vegetable. <laughs> yeah. So I think we came up with downhill pumpkin rolling about four years ago. And that was yeah. an idea I had. I said, this rom down this hill. <laughs> and uh, over the years, we've refined it and <laughs> improved safety. Somewhat. I Somewhat. Think, I think we have more. We've still to got a bit more there. to do. It's a bit weird because you have to, people, yeah, people don't have common sense and you have to manage a whole big cra- a lot of people all at once. Yeah. Uh, and that's the plan. And you need to do that before you start rolling pumpkins. So, yeah, we're going to have to work something a little bit better out. Um, I think you're well, right. I well, th- previously it was just me doing it, but now that you understand the gist of it, it's good. So yeah, so I, I put an e- we had an exclusion zone this this time where you've got an area that you don't yeah. go into. In initially, the initially the exclusion zone was really narrow, and uh, people used to stand right up against it, and uh, wasn't good. Yeah, so I've made it a lot wider, but even so, pumpkins are not very straight when they roll. Not very predictable. Not very predictable at all. Uh, and and what su- scares me or worries me is that people don't have a basic understanding of physics. No, they don't. In terms of mass and momentum. Yeah, and they'll just stand they there go, watching oh, this thing. I'll just put my foot out and stop this 200-kilo freaking pumpkin that's rolling to me, towards me at 40K because, you know, I, I've got a good f- it's a size ve- nine. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> and it's a vegetable. What could it do? I'm like, oh my God, something's going to break a leg. So, yeah, what we're going to have to do, I think, and I'm just thinking this now. Yeah. Next time we have actual 
uh, zones for viewer zones. Yeah. And we maybe have a barrier around those zones. Every everything else is open. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we just say you got to get into a viewer zone because because um, people weren't moving out the way. And I'm like, some kids gonna get totally owned. So uh, when we first started doing it, we let them roll any type of pumpkin, including little crown yeah. pump the grey pumpkins that you can buy at the supermarket and they don't break they just take off forever yeah so we stopped doing that most people yeah, yeah. have so to roll so the first year I, I was there what, some of those went way through the crowd and then some they random disappear. family is, yeah, random. is going down yeah. a path like half a K away and this little butternut pumpkin side goes flying goes, past them boom yeah, like it would wipe the kids that would have out. smashed a few ankles out of it yeah so uh, last year last year I had said right nothing below this sort of size and yeah I was that's pretty good being my bossy self I had this argument with this father yes though. yeah was yeah. that when we first went to the top of the hill eh? and I yeah think that oh no um we, we'd rolled quite a few oh. and I had said because I had an we, argument we didn't have anything below the size yeah. and then this guy started putting this I'm like no you can't roll that and he goes, no, my son grew it all year and he's been looking forward to this. I'm like, it ain't happening here. You're not rolling it. Yeah, it's yeah. dangerous because it was you know, the size of a football and we, we had a, yeah. a general size, at least in my head, of how of big what we, it had to be. Because we knew what, what breaks. What would break, yeah. He goes, oh, and we had this big argument. I was backing down. And so he finally turned to his son. No, I, the kid was uh, nine, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. And um, he finally said to his son, oh, we'll go back home and we'll roll it down the hill at the back of our place. And the wife was getting in on it and Good abusing time. the shit oh. out of me. I'm like, dude, I don't care what you say because <laughs> somebody dies at the end of this. You know, well, I'm not going to die, but you know what I mean. Uh, if somebody gets hurt, it's not going to be on your head, is it? It's going to be on mine. I so, know. People are so weird. It's like yeah. roll, uh, we're rolling vegetable down the hill, man. Just, what do you expect? Yeah, I mean. If you did that, I think sort of if you did that and it was just you and there wasn't a crowd of people around, you could yeah. get away with it. Yeah, you could. But we got 100, 200 people. There's a lot of people there. You know, like, wow. Yeah. Anyway, if you have never been to the Great the great Pumpkin Carnival, great pumpkin carnival uh, you definitely have to come on. And the, the, the rolling is, I think, is key. Although you should be there for the whole day because if you've got kids and stuff, they have a lot of free races, you know. It was I laughed because they had the uh, potato and spoon egg and race. Spoon. Yeah, but it's like an egg and oh, spoon, yeah. but they had a potato, potato and spoon. And, spoon yeah. and, yeah, we can't hear you when you're sitting I, back there. Yeah, I'm hearing. They had a potato and spoon, and then the adults, the dads were up with a pumpkin on a shovel yeah. <laughs> race, which was like the... Did you see that vision. guy that was closest to us? And he was like, he was real staunch looking, and he thought he was the man... And he was ready to go, and they went, go, and he took two steps, and it fell off. I know. And I was like, you dick. I, I, I was on the other side of you, like you were yeah. with the radio guy saying, so I was I was on the other side for that. So, But, yeah, um, the guy who, who just won, because I was, I was talking to Carl, and Carl was talking about their technique, of course, because that's a Carl thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's like, yeah, I think you would just tip it forward and then run forward to keep momentum so it doesn't roll off the end of oh, your shovel. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm like, yeah, okay, Carl. He should, he should give it a go, <laughs> and then we'll know. Because I sort of pointed at him, have a go, and he goes, well, it's another shovel. You could have a go. And I'm like, I'm knackered from carrying yeah, pumpkin. Yeah. Sad excuse, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, no, um. So there's lots of activities for the kids. It was really good. You, you had a story about um, uh, you had a comment from a solo mum or something. Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of good comments from people, and a solo mum uh, really liked it because it's one of the only events that you come to, spend quite a few hours, and have a lot of fun, and it doesn't cost you anything. Of course, we do have stuff that you could buy. There's like yeah. subway the the subway um, there's a subway trailer. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the subway trailer very well. Oh, do you? Yeah, it goes to a lot of events that I go to, like the, the Relay for Life. Um, From what I understand, when we talk to the subway guy, there's only two of them. There's two subway trailers. He's got one. Um, I think it's the guy that owns the subway at the base. Uh, the, yeah, well, he, he owns the one in... Um, he might have a couple then. Yeah, he owns the one in Centre Place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz I see him all the time. Yeah, and and it's probably one of the best things I've ever done because he can take subway to the event, which yeah. is great. And uh, yeah, it was good. But this uh, the comment was good from this lady. She said, "Oh, we had lots of fun and the kids can make uh, vegetable animals and creations." 
we get a lot of stuff donated, which is good. Yeah. So, yeah, good fun day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so she only spent a few dollars on, I, I assume, those raffle tickets. Wow, well, the raffle's funny because we get some stuff to raffle off and it's 50 cents a, a ticket. Yeah, yeah. You know, here's, here's a $80 thing for 50 cents. It's pretty yeah. good. So people go crazy on those. And it's interesting because we do get a lot of help and uh, we do get a lot of equipment donated. And a lot of it's just talking to the right people and just being nice. Yeah, and so I think we should have a shout out to Free FM who's um, yeah, like there's a whole supported it for a while. Yeah, there's Free FM, they support it. Hamilton Council support it. There's heaps of people. Metal Co, Sensitronic Scales, yeah, uh, Print House Print. They did all the printing for so, us. So, so Metal Co. And if in case we glossed over this, the new New Zealand, in fact, Southern Hemisphere record. Yes, I sh- yeah, we should actually mention that. <laughs> That's probably like a key. That's yeah, probably the most key, important thing. key key item. Because it was on the news and stuff as well, uh, but thanks to Sam and his wonderful press release. Yeah, I didn't but, even know how to do a press release, <laughs> so I just muddled my way through that. Yeah, no, press releases, they work, eh? Hey? I, I, yeah, you they know, do. I've done those before. Yeah. But I found yes. a really good website, actually, a New Zealand website that actually stepped you through it. Oh, really? Um, I actually should find that link because it had heaps of cool documents, actually. Yeah, put it in the show notes because I use that as a resource myself. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, um, yeah, New New Zealand record was 754.5. That's the one. So that's from Tim Harris. Yeah. And the reason... So that's why we needed Metal Co. to bring their truck with the on-truck crane, which is a high ab, but not a high ab. Yeah. And um, long story. And um, lift yeah, the pumpkin up. And lift the pumpkin up. And it was it's such a intricate process to lift a pumpkin. Yeah, it was interesting. But it's because uh, you obviously don't want to drop it, so you've got to make all sure and, the straps and yeah, are right. And you, so you've got to, you can't like lift the pumpkin up and put it on something because it's seven hundred and fifty four kgs. So you've got these straps that hang around the side and you tie them up around the bottom. And like, you've got yep. to lift it up, but you've got to make sure that the balance is right because it's an oddly shaped. Very, item. This one was very odd. Yeah, and um, if you had too much strain on one side or whatever, it could conceivably crack in half. Yeah, and if anything like that happens. It's not eligible to be weighed. No. So it took twenty minutes for I us think so, to yeah, lift it up to and it move up. it across. Yep, yep. Um, and so there's this huge crowd of people waiting with bated breath, um, but they did end up breathing because otherwise they would have all fainted in twenty minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to see wh- whether you know we would beat the New Zealand record and and we totally smashed it. Or I shouldn't say we. Tim. Tim smashed it. Smashed it definitely. But it's an interesting thing because. Um, it's always just been the New Zealand record. That's what we've always called it. That's all right. And uh, late last year, I think it was, I think it was late, was it late this year? Oh, I don't know, late last year, very early this year, an Australian grower actually got a very heavy pumpkin, about 730-something kilos, I think it was. Yeah. And he, no, 740, sorry. When they published that, it was, they called it the new Australasian record. And I'd never heard it called that before. Like, it was always just the Australian record and the New Zealand record. So I just said, oh, well, we've got the new Australasian record. And also, it's the heaviest pumpkin in the Southern Hemisphere. Had to do a quick search on Wikipedia to make sure I saw all the countries in the Southern Hemisphere in case there was someone I forgot. Well, it's South Africa, but they don't do vegetables. They only eat meat, right? No, no, they they, they actually have a pretty good uh, giant pumpkin little um, group growing over there. But nothing to that size. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, when you think about it, it's the largest pumpkin or vegetable in the southern hemisphere that's pretty crazy that's that's pretty good so right on the 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 cusp of you know it was the same day that we lost the cricket world cup final yeah, to yeah Australia. who cares about that but yeah, yeah exactly this is way more important i did feel a bit stink i should have had i've, I've written it down for next year i'm going to get some big signs made up i uh, should have had new new zealand record instead of me just writing on it yeah, 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 yeah. But that's all right. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. I, th- I, I think we should do a T-shirt for, for Tim. You yeah. should do a T-shirt. Yeah, we should get something put together. Yeah. And what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Something to do with pumpkins. Oh, uh, I think he's taking the seeds out on Monday, so I'm going to go around there and have a look at that and see how many's inside it. Some giant pumpkins only have like 20 seeds and others have hundreds. It's, that's really bizarre. Yeah, it's a genetic thing. It's, that's really bizarre. You just, yeah, you just assume they're all the same. That was the Great Pumpkin Carnival. It was cool. It was good fun. If you want to help out, let us know because it is actually quite rewarding to help out. Did I well. tell you, actually talking about the pumpkin thing, did I tell you I'm supposed to source some pumpkins for a film? Uh, no. Oh, there's a... I feel like you're cheating on me with these other films. What? 
What? What? Yeah, I know. <laughs> a production company in Auckland is doing a short film or something, and they need some pumpkins for the 26th of April. I have to sort that out. Oh, wow. Uh, they need them to range from 10 to 40 kilos. They need them sitting on a table in the background of a shot uh, for something. I don't know. And then, yeah, so I better get onto that. Yeah, yeah. Even if you can get onto it and spray them with some polyurethane or something. So. Oh, no, it would be good. The, the small pumpkins will be sweet. So yeah, they'll last a while. And okay. that's and then I'll just flick them like a couple of hundred of the bloody filmmakers podcast cards as oh, well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, and changing the subject totally. Okay, we, we had you come along to film night last night. This is the first time you've been with our little uh, film night group. Yeah, you've got a film night group. Um, yeah, I don't go as often as I'd like to. I, I've missed the last couple because I've been working in Auckland and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, what did you think? It was. It was good. It was good. I, I don't think I have the knowledge of films to be able to pick something good. <laughs> like, there isn't, like, if I pick something, it could be completely mainstream and everyone would be like, oh, you've already seen that like 400 times. Yeah, yeah. So, the, what was the first one Although, called? Hang it was on. called Seconds. That's right. Yeah. So, before we get into that, we Chris drives me, me and him all the way up to Adam's place. <laughs> and out we, in the country in the Ohio. Which is fine. And we get there and we stop and Chris looks at me and says, are you all right with dogs? <laughs> and I'm like, what a... I don't know why... The, ti- the timing of that question could have been uh, better, like, before we left. Because if I did have a problem with dogs, and I couldn't cope with dogs, I probably couldn't deal with the Great Dane that Adam has. It's it's only a puppy. It's only a puppy. It's still up to... What, it's a giant. Breast height? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's larger than any miniature horse, and it's... Um, but, I mean, I'm fine with dogs, and he was friendly, and it was yeah, good. Yeah, 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 it's cool, it's cool. I, it just didn't even occur to me, and it, until I got there, I went, I never mentioned the fact that... Uh, are you okay with dogs? And she yeah. just went, no. I no, had, I'm not. I, I was <laughs> expecting you to say, oh, that's right, he's got 20 of them. I was expecting yeah. heaps of little ones, actually, to be honest. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought that was going, and no, then this Great Dane comes bounding out. <laughs> Lolloping out. But <laughs> it's not often you see a Great Dane. Out. Yeah. It's not, I haven't seen one for ages. Yeah, yeah, no, the same. And um, So they, they lost their uh, older Great Dane, which they had for ages, about... A year ago, two years ago. Oh, wow. And so they've just had this puppy for the last year or two. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, it, was, it was quite sad. But um, the owners of this puppy um, were going overseas to live. Oh, okay. And so they adopted it and went yeah. through a whole rigmarole to I do bet that. they did. But, yeah, no, it's, it's cool. Max good. Max good. He's just a, a pup still. Yeah, when he yeah. He wants to sit on the couch with everyone. and Or sit on you. <laughs> yeah, and stare at you while you're eating. <laughs> Yeah, so that was cool. But the movie night itself, um, we played a black and white movie from the 60s. I, I think, think it's it 60s. Yeah, um, called Seconds, starring Rock Hudson, which yep. was pretty cool, black and white. Um, it was a pretty good story, actually. It was a good story. The cinematography was really good. Some lines were a bit weird. It's weird watching something from the 60s because you just go the hell are they talking about yeah, or the yeah. way they talk but that's what, how they talked back then actually it was I'll tell you the, the, we all commented on it apparently none of them knew how to kiss on screen they would just like mush their faces together it's hard oh, to explain no. and, they just went, and it was like what do you and I was like the first time it happened I thought oh, it's just them but everyone in the movie just mushed their faces together and what it made me think of was uh, I read something somewhere was if you want rain to show up in film you have to have a lot of water and it's really excessive, like uh, normal rain you can't see easily. Yeah, yeah. So when they film... Because you, you've seen that, and you're watching rugby, and, and you're watching the play, yeah, yeah. and then it zooms in on somebody, and they're wet, and you go, why are they yeah, wet? Yeah. And it's because it's pissing so around, in the but film, you can't tell it. So in, the, in filmmaking, they have to exaggerate rain. It's got to have massive droplets and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I wonder if that's what they're trying to do with this kissing, because they're just mushing their faces together. It didn't... Oh, it was so weird. It was, it, yeah, it was, it was, really, it was retarded. It was like, two, <laughs> it really was it, retarded. If, if you wanted to think of something, think of two Muppets trying to kiss and just Kermit and Miss Piggy just mushing their faces together. This is what everyone in this film was doing. Yeah. And then there was a gratuitous scene in the middle, which was a party, um, a paganist party where they were treading the treading the grapes, grapes. But everybody was doing it naked, so they all got their clothes off and yeah. they jumped into this. Made tub no sense, but it, it was in there. It was gratuitous 
nakedness. Boobies the everywhere. Middle of the film. It was funny as hell. Uh, but the second film was funny. And I mean, that's something that... Yeah, you need to explain this. You, you have to see with a bunch of people. This is not the sort of thing you could no, you sit at home and watch. I mean, you could, but, but you definitely you're want, missing something. Yeah, You've yeah. got to have everybody else... I've never laughed throwing, so much <laughs> throwing in, their five in such a word. long time. So there's this uh, thing called Draft House Films, and they what they do is they, uh, based in America, they buy 35 mil films all over the place. They're, they're trying to save Wherever them because they, they die. You know, the, 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 the films, you know, go mouldy or whatever. And so uh, they, they go around and they've, they've saved a lot of films. But they buy Sight Unseen and all the rest of it. But one of the things they noticed was at the beginning of a lot of the films was trailers for other films. And a lot of these films that they had trailers for have been lost. You know, yeah. You'll never see them. They, they don't exist. But the trailers themselves are pretty... Epic. <laughs> yeah, no, epic. For one of a better So I word. think there was 46 trailers was yeah, on that list. Yeah, something like that. It might have been a bit more, I think. Yeah. It was 46. We 46. watched 46 trailers in a row. Yeah, um, so so basically it was just 46 old 35mm trailers. And they're all in grindhouse a type films, eh? Is that yeah, yeah. Um, exploitation films, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh my gosh. They were, it was the funniest stuff. Mr. No Legs. And there's this guy with no legs. Beating people up. people. And he was there for the first five seconds of the two-minute trailer. Yeah. And, and not in there him. at all for the rest of it. And Mr. There was, no Legs. There was Stunt Rock, which stunt. was a rock band that was taking on the world. But they had all these crazy stunts in it. And Animal Protector. Yeah, David Carradine. What's your favorite? The- actually, Chris's favorite one? The Lawyer. The lawyer was awesome, and it was just one monologue delivered. And it's a close-up um, of this guy's face. And, yeah, he just delivers the monologue, which I'm not going to repeat now because I just get it wrong. But it, it's classic. It was classic the first time we heard it. Anyway, we listened to it again. It's like, um, But also Dungeon Master I really liked. Uh, that would be my favorite. That's the one I want to see. What was Adam's favorite one with the helicopters, remote control helicopters oh, with little missiles chasing a, floating, cops. Flo- chasing a floating head that then exploded? Yeah, it, yeah, it was a demonic zombie Asian film. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, so if you don't get it, if you get a chance, watch. It. I don't even know what the thing's called, but it's done by Draft House Films. Yeah, we'll find um, out. Yeah, if I can find a link for it, we'll put it on the show notes. I know Adam had to get it from the states. Yeah, um, but yeah, our movie nights are pretty good, and I'm gonna get Sam to come along to the next. 24-hour movie marathon. We, we talked about it, the we last did. one, in one of the in one of, episodes. Yeah, don't know which episode, so yeah. just take you this random stab at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll be in the show notes. That, that was pretty cool. We'll have to get you along to some more of those. <laughs> all right, so that's us, I think, for this episode. Yep, we're all pumpkined out. Did we say? Yep, so episode 27, I'm all pumpkined out for the year. So yeah, already yeah, so we'll get... Work some bloody things. work out of you now and get some of these uh, yeah, podcasts yeah, yeah, edited. Yeah. Actually, after this, I've got to go and move my bed into your shack of a room. Yeah, yeah. Not your room, dungeon. but the dungeon room thing downstairs. Yeah, please elaborate. On yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> <Some of weird. laughs> Clarify that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, that's cool. Um, we'll go and do some uh, moving of house stuff. Yep. That'd All right. Cool. Well, that's us. Come so, catch up with us on Twitter at Chris and Sam Pod. Find us at the Chris and Sam Podcast dot com and we are the Chris and Sam Podcast on Facebook. Yep, not the guys in the hot tub. No, they do still pop up. So um, I think that's due because they've got a couple more likes than us. So if you could go to the Chris and Sam Podcast on Facebook, find us and like the page, that would be wonderful. Yes, um, we're the ones with the um, actual logo of two the, logo logo yeah. of the two light bulb head light bulb people. head people. I don't know how else to say that. No, that bulb. sounds good. All right, so we'll see you next time. Take care and um, enjoy life. <laughs> Excellent. Until next time, see ya. Bye. Hope you enjoy the show. Make sure to subscribe and we'll catch you next week. Don't forget to tell your friends.